Do you think AI can't really reason? Yeah, I might want to rethink that. The latest research reveals something fascinating about machine intelligence that most experts have completely missed. Today, I'm going to charge into the conflict between AI believers and AI skeptics on whether AI is reasoning or if it's just a good faker. Is there a ghost in the machine? I'm Evan Goldstein. I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist. I'm building the AI Capitalist channel to talk to the leaders and the thinkers, like you, about navigating this new world of intelligent machines. What I'm gonna do in this episode is go through why some people think that AI is actually thinking its way through problems. Then I'm gonna let you know what the AI skeptics, the people who think that AI is basically a glorified high-tech echo chamber are saying. Now this is really humanity's first opportunity to take apart and explore an intelligence that is entirely alien to humanity. So let's get to it. So the chatter about whether AI can really reason has ramped up since OpenAI dropped their O1 model in late 2024. The recent release of O3 Mini only pushes this argument further. This new technology has everyone buzzing in the science world with opinions all over the place. Some people roll their eyes and other people are cheering it on. Just the idea that machines can think like us hits a nerve. After all, reasoning is something that we've always thought only humans could do. Now, the whole back and forth about machines having reasoning skills reminds us of past debates. Back in the 1800s, people thought that doing math was something only humans could pull off. But then calculators came along and flipped that script and it showed that machines could totally outshine us in some tasks. Now we're in a similar boat with artificial intelligence, which is getting better at doing fancy calculations, but also seems to be reasoning. The arguments are pretty split. Some people are all in, and they're saying that artificial general intelligence, or AGI, machines that think like people, is just around the corner. And on the flip side, the skeptics straight up say AI can't really reason at all. A big part of the debate comes from Dr. Gary Marcus, who's a well-known uh, professor over at New York University. Now, he often pushes back against the hype surrounding AI. He says that while it's great at spotting patterns, it doesn't really get what it's doing. He even called modern chatbots fancy autocomplete tools, which matches up with what Dr. Emily Bender, who's a professor in computational linguistics at the University of Washington said about language models. She said that they're basically stochastic parrots, which means that they're just crunching numbers and not actually understanding anything. Now the skeptics have some solid research to back them up. A 2024 study from Apple showed that even advanced systems like O1 bomb out on basic logical tests when you throw in a few tricky details. This makes it pretty clear that these AIs are playing a sophisticated game of pattern matching rather than true reasoning. For example, if you toss some irrelevant information into a math problem, their performance tanks, something that a human would never fall for. We can easily tell what's important and what's not, but AI struggles with that sort of information. This suggests that despite how impressive they may seem, today's AIs don't just have the real reasoning skills that we do. The ability to juggle abstract ideas and apply logic beyond just surface patterns. So the big question is, what really counts as a genuine reasoning machine? This is where the debate gets juicy because it dives into both the philosophical ideas and to the hard evidence that we have on hand. The debate over whether large language models or LLMs can reason requires careful examination of what we mean by reasoning itself. So to move beyond mere opinions and reach factual conclusions, we have to establish clear definitions and metrics. But this immediately presents a challenge because the very concept of reasoning is laden with human-centric assumptions. A fundamental issue in this debate is the frequent addition of qualifiers like truly or genuinely to the word reasoning. These modifiers suggest that an implicit comparison to human cognition is the gold standard. Now this tendency toward anthropomorphic bias, the attribution of human characteristics as the measure of intelligence has deep roots in our own intellectual history. Alan Turing recognized this bias when he developed his famous Turing test in 1950. Now this test, which measures a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from a human, was groundbreaking for its time, but it reinforces the problematic assumption that human-like behavior is the only valid measure of intelligence. A more objective approach would define reasoning as the cognitive ability to solve problems that require logical thinking, regardless of the method used to reach solutions. This definition encompasses various forms of problem solving, including mathematical computation, common sense applications, language comprehension, and logical inference. It provides a practical framework for evaluation through concrete and measurable outcomes, which is needed for science. And if you want AI capitalists to have a good outcome, push the like button. Let's me know that I'm making content you like so that I can make more of it and it helps spread the content to others. Let's break AI capitalists out of small channel hell. 
The chain of thought approach developed by researchers at Google and later implemented in systems like OpenAI's O1 and O3 suggests that true reasoning involves sequential step-by-step -step thinking processes. Now this method is trying to make AI reasoning more transparent and human interpretable by breaking down problem solving into discrete steps. Now, skeptics would argue that this functional definition of reasoning is fundamentally flawed. They would contend that authentic reasoning requires more than just producing correct answers. It demands consistent performance across similar problems and resilience to irrelevant information. So no tricks. The recent research from Apple demonstrates that LLMs fail these tests. Now, when presented with mathematically identical problems that contain slightly different wording or irrelevant details, these systems produce very different results. This inconsistency reveals that LLMs aren't engaging in genuine logical reasoning. They're engaging in sophisticated pattern matching. True reasoning, according to this perspective, requires the ability to abstract core principles and then apply them consistently across varied contexts. And this is a capability that current AI systems do not have. The fact that an AI system can sometimes solve complex problems while failing at simple variations suggests that it lacks the fundamental understanding necessary for genuine reasoning. This debate points to a larger question. Must we define artificial intelligence through the lens of human cognition, or can we recognize it as a fundamentally different form of information processing, what might be called an alien intelligence? The whole chain of thought process has become a very big tool in the AI research scene. Back in 2022, Google Research created a game-changing paper that showed how AI can be guided through reasoning step by step. Now, later on, this method got polished and it was used in OpenAI's O1 and O3 models, leading some researchers to call it a major breakthrough. This technique helps AI systems tackle tricky problems by breaking them down into bite-sized steps, like how we'd work through a math proof or a logical assignment. But here's the catch. Focusing so much on step-by-step -step reasoning might have unintentionally narrowed down our idea of reasoning itself. Yes, solving problems in multiple steps is one way to reason, but it's definitely not the only way to reason. Human thinking is a lot more diverse and it covers everything from quick gut feelings to deeper analytical thoughts. Take a chess grandmaster, for example. They can make really good moves just by recognizing patterns and relying on intuition without going through each decision step by step. You don't have to look 12 moves ahead, you just wanna develop a piece at the beginning of the game. You're not trying to get checkmate on move one. The current chatter about AI's reasoning skills gets bogged down by a lot of limiting ideas. Some critics brush off AI reasoning just because it doesn't match how humans think. And others zoom in just on the complex problem solving and ignore simpler reasoning tasks. And some insist that real reasoning always has to be step by step. AI skeptics, including those over at Apple researchers, would say that broadening our definition of reasoning risks muddying the waters between true reasoning and just pattern matching. In their study from 2024, they showed that AI systems, even those using a chain of thought approach, hit some serious roadblocks when they were put to the test. For example, when faced with math problems that have irrelevant information thrown in, these systems can't tell what's important and what's not. They argue that real reasoning isn't just about getting the right answers, but about understanding those logical connections. The fact that AI can get tripped up by tiny changes in problem wording shows that it doesn't have that foundational understanding nailed down. It's like a student who just memorizes the answers instead of grasping the concepts behind them. It's not real reasoning. An AI that leans on pattern matching over logical understanding isn't genuinely reasoning no matter how slick its pattern recognition is. So the real challenge isn't just about defining what reasoning is. It's about figuring out how to objectively measure the difference between genuine reasoning skills and just good old pattern recognition. Now, when it comes to figuring out how smart artificial intelligence really is, we have to ditch the subjective judgments based on human-like behavior and stick to objective standardized tests. This became very important back in 2022 when Blake Lemoine, who was a Google engineer, claimed that his AI chatbot was sentient. His wild claims ended up costing him his job and they really show the dangers of relying on gut feelings instead of hard evidence when judging artificial intelligence. Now, rather than going off on personal impressions, the AI research community has created a bunch of standardized benchmarks to measure different cognitive abilities. Some of those include Hella Swag and Wino Grand, which check how well an AI system understands and uses common sense everyday information. Then there's Glue, which is the general language understanding evaluation and super glue. These look at how well AI can understand language in various tasks. Infobench tests if AI can follow complicated instructions, and the AI2 reasoning challenge, which is ARC, 
focuses on math and science reasoning checks and if AI can solve problems step by step. Now these testing methods recognize that reasoning isn't just one thing, it's a mix of different skills. Just like human intelligence isn't a one size fits all trait, AI reasoning needs to be assessed across various areas and various tasks. Each test looks at specific reasoning skills from simple pattern recognition to more complex logical thinking. Now large language models show some impressive skills when it comes to tackling complex instructions, and it really gives us a peek into how they reason. Dr. Sebastian Bubeck, who made the jump to Microsoft from OpenAI in 2024, made a really important point on this. Just the act of following instructions means that you have to understand the instructions. Now this throws a wrench into the whole idea that AI is just about pattern matching without actually getting what it's doing. So if we look at the Winograd benchmark, for example, it's a neat way to test how AI can handle common sense reasoning skills. A lot of these tests dive into pronoun resolution, which is figuring out who's who in difficult sentences. Like the sentence, Anne asked Mary what time the library closes because she had forgotten. Humans quickly get that the she is talking about Anne based on the context. And if AI can figure that out too, then it hints at some level of understanding. Now the statistics from top AI systems are pretty impressive too. Google's Gemini Pro 1.5 hit a solid 92.5% accuracy on the Hella Swag benchmark. And OpenAI's GPT-4 Turbo scored an even higher 96%, with the MMLU, the Massive Multitest Language Understanding Test, which is a lot like the Glue benchmark. And GPT-4 got 87%, and Gemini Ultra got 90%. While well, these high scores across different tests are suggesting that these AIs are becoming more than just memorizing and pattern-spotting machines. But not everyone is confident in these benchmarks. The critics raise eyebrows about how these tests are designed, Let's talk about data contamination, or the AI might have seen the test questions while it was training. Plus, companies often choose to share results only from benchmarks where they come out on top, which can paint a pretty biased picture of what their systems can actually do. Skeptics argue that just being able to follow instructions doesn't mean the systems truly understand what's going on. A study by the Apple research team in 2024 showed that while AI can play along with standard instructions really well, it stumbles when those instructions get tweaked a bit, or if they just have some extra fluff thrown in. Now this suggests that rather than genuinely grasping what they're told, these systems are just matching instruction response patterns that they learned from the training day. Real understanding would mean consistently tackling variations of the same logic task, something current AI models still have trouble with. Those high scores on the benchmarks like Winograd might just mean that the AI is good at spotting language patterns instead of real common sense reasoning. When these systems face new or weird scenarios that they didn't train on, they often struggle. This inconsistency hints that while the AI can put on a show of understanding in controlled tests, they don't have the solid reasoning skills that real comprehension requires. In a nutshell, those benchmark results look awesome, but they might be measuring skillful pattern matching more than true reasoning or understanding. The real challenge is to come up with tests that can easily tell the difference between the two. When you really dig into how humans and AI deal with information, the differences are eye-opening. There are three main areas where they stand apart feelings, understanding, and decision-making. Yes, machines can fake emotions, but they don't actually feel anything. Humans usually grasp concepts pretty easily. We either get it or we don't. AI, on the other hand, works more on probability level, and that can shift depending on the situation. When it comes to making decisions, machines don't hesitate the way people do. One of the cool things about how people understand things is that they have that light bulb moment when they finally click on something. Now, that kind of understanding is strong and stays focused even when distractions come into play. A study from Apple in 2024 nailed this difference, which is surprising given how secretive Apple usually is about its research. Now, the study pointed out a key issue with how large language models handle information. The researchers had these AI systems tackle math problems, but it tossed in some irrelevant information like switch names and numbers around. Even though those changes shouldn't have tripped them up, the AI's performance really took a hit. But humans can easily filter out the garbage and concentrate on what really matters in the problem. Still, some people think that this perspective is too skewed toward how humans view intelligence and reasoning. Now, these people, including Apple researchers, argue that the flaws mean LLMs lack true logical reasoning, but they're just judging based on the idea that human logic is the only way to be smart. Another attitude is that maybe AI has ways of processing information in ways that don't mimic human thought but could still work effectively. It's also important to remember that human reasoning isn't perfect either. We can get caught up in cognitive biases and struggle to filter out irrelevant information, just because machines process things differently doesn't mean that they're reasoning. Maybe we just need to widen our definitioning of what reasoning and intelligence really mean. The real challenge isn't about making AI think like humans, it's about understanding how it uniquely processes information 
while acknowledging what it does well and where it can trip up. This shifts the focus from whether AI can do true reasoning to exploring how we can best use its different processing methods. The whole debate about AI's reasoning skills highlights our own human biases and what humans can actually achieve. The, the idea that the AI has to think like us to be considered real reasoning comes from a pretty self-centered perspective. This isn't a new thing. History has seen pushback against technology that challenges our perception of ourselves as the smartest beings. Look in the 1970s, for example, when calculators started outperforming humans in math. That made people rethink what being math smart really meant. In 1997, IBM's Deep Blue beat chess champion Garry Kasparov, and that shook our belief that strategic thinking was strictly a human thing. And who can forget AlphaGo when it smacked down Lee Sedol in Go in 2016, a game thought to be too complex for machines. Each of these breakthroughs met with skepticism and claims that machines weren't really thinking. Now fast forward to today, and the same narrative shows up in the AI reasoning debate. Critics argue that AI's go-to method of pattern matching isn't real, but these systems often come up with the right answers in various tasks. They can, if they can consistently tackle complex problems and nail the result, maybe it's less about their process and more about the outcomes. Ultimately, the debate challenges us to consider whether we stick to our human-centric view of intelligence or broaden our understanding. Instead of seeing AI as a rival to human intelligence, we could start recognizing it as a different kind of intelligence with its own unique strengths and weaknesses. Don't stop now. I have dozens more videos. This video is part of a playlist, which I'll post for you here so that you can go through and watch other videos that are similar, or you can watch our newest videos and we have lots of other playlists. So keep clicking, keep watching. Click over there.